Austin Hagen, and I'm giving my presentation for the 2020 APRES annual meeting. Title is Yield Response of Root Knot Susceptible and Resistant Peanut Cultivars as Impacted by uh, Nematicide Inputs. And my co authors are uh, uh, Lee Campbell and, uh, and Larry Wells at the, uh, at the Wiregrass Research and Extension Center. Root knot's always been a major issue uh, in peanut, particularly in the southeastern part of the state, where traditionally most of the peanut acreage has been located. Uh, the problem has dissipated to some degree in recent years as uh, our acreage has actually moved. A good deal of it has moved to the southwestern part of the state and then later on to other parts of the state. And as a result, instead of maybe 180,000 acres of peanuts in the southeastern corner of the state. We now have about 120,000 acres. So the rotations in that area have actually improved uh, to a greater degree in, uh, uh, in the impact of peanut root dot nematode on yield has declined a great deal, but nevertheless, that uh, nematode is still present and still certainly capable of causing significant yield loss uh, in some fields depending on rotation patterns. Now, uh, historically, and I've been working in this area for nearly 40 years, uh, the most efficient and effective means of managing root knot and peanut has been at least a two year out uh, crop rotation there. Based on our rotation studies at the Wiregrass substation, there's a, oftentimes a substantial yield gain uh, from a one year to a two year out rotation, either we looking at cotton or corn as a rotation partner. In the past, a lot of growers used uh, nematicides and the products that have been used have, have varied over the years, basically coming in and out based on EPA regulations at this point in time, uh, at least for Alabama producers, we're basically looking at ag logic, bellum total, uh, are the primary materials and maybe a little bit of vitate use. Uh, we don't really use telone in Alabama, but it is used in other states. The other option, one that's a little bit newer, of course, is the use of uh, resistant varieties. And early on, Cohen, which was the first, proved to be highly sensitive to tomato spotted wilt, so it was certainly inappropriate to grow in our area as a result of, of that issue. Uh, later on, uh, TIF Guard, uh, and then TIF NV High Oil and Georgia 14N have been released into the marketplace, but there's really not been a, a, a typically been a lot of interest in growing any of these cultivars simply because they are perceived as, as having substantially lower yields than the current industry standard, which is Georgia 06G. Uh, and if you look at any of the PV trial, PVT trials, uh, from the wiregrass station where we have a two year out rotation that certainly is the case. They, they'll yield up to 1500 pounds per acre less than an 06G. So the growers feel that they're better off using an 06G with a nematicide than they might be in, in growing some of these varieties. So this study was basically set up uh, to compare 06Gs the uh, TIF NV High Oil and Georgia 14 Ns in a short rotation in a location with a background uh, healthy population of the peanut root knot nematode, um, and then to assess the impacts of uh, some of our standard nematicide treatments, specifically um, uh, Agologic and Bellum Total, uh, on the performance of, of these cultivars. And there were a number of parameters that were monitored over the course of the studies. This, the studies were actually conducted from 2017 through 2019 uh, on basically within the same tier at the Wiregrass Research and Extension Center. Uh, in 2017, it was a continuous rotation. So penis had been grown there in 2016. Uh, however, for the following two years, we were in a, in a, in a one year out rotation. Um, leaf spot, white mold were also monitored, root knot damage in juvenile populations were also monitored uh, uh, and, and yields were taken. And the 
this particular slide just shows out or uh, illustrates the sources of variation in the accompanying F values for the general linear models for year cultivar and nematicide and any uh, possible interactions. And to give you mainly uh, the effects on the diseases and nematodes were either cultivar, year by cultivar, or, or a year. There were some other interactions uh, that'll be, uh, uh, that are illustrated that'll be discussed later on as well. Just to run through the uh, diseases and then root knot damage. Um, on the left hand side is leaf spot defoliation. There's again some differences among the varieties with O6G sometimes having a little more leaf spot defoliation than the other cultivars. Also having less than TIF NB high oil, but overall the levels of defoliation are low and, and it's unlikely that leaf spot had any impact uh, on any on uh, on yield parameters, but but there were some minor differences among the cultivars that were screened. If you look at uh, white mold in the middle, uh, there's a tendency for O6G, particularly in the first two years of the study, to have a little bit more white mold than the other cultivars. And on the flip side, uh, TIF NB high oil in the Georgia 14N generally had. Uh, in, in any given year, except for 2017, similarly lower uh, levels of, uh, of white mold. And then as you would anticipate with the O6G being susceptible to uh, uh, root knot nematode, uh, that it had higher ratings for damage to the pegs and the pods than did the, uh, than the two resistant varieties, which basically uh, had no damage at all. And there was a year effect as far as uh, damage on the O6G, but there was none uh, on the other two varieties. Simply the levels were so low that um, it, it was not an issue. Uh, juvenile counts did vary some by years. They were higher in, on the control and with the ag logic uh, than with vellum total in 2017. Uh, however, there uh, and this is an issue when you always run into uh, nematode populations. They, there's a lot of variation within the uh, 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 treatments. And the net result was that there really were no differences in populations uh, in 2018 or, or 2019, regardless of the, uh, of the nematicide treatment. And finally, uh, year of... Uh, cultivar and nematicide effects. There, as I mentioned, there, there was a difference in the rotations and those differences were illustrated in the, uh, in the um, uh, yields by year with 2017 having a continuous peanut rotation, having lower yields uh, than in 2018 or 19, which is pretty consistent with any of the work that uh, rotation work that is done with the Wiregrass Research and Extension Center showing that uh, the one year out rotations are usually yield about 800 pounds, six to 800 pounds more than continuous peanuts uh, at that location. Cultivars differed in yield. The one difference here was that TIF NV high oil clearly out yielded the O6Gs uh, and also the Georgia 14N. So at least as far as the cultivar is concerned, there, see, there is a clear benefit or, uh, from having a TIF NB high oil in a situation where there is an established population of root knot uh, in comparison with the O6G. And a little bit of a surprise because they know in some of the individual year data there were some differences uh, in yield among these treatments, but overall over a three year period and there were no significant interactions between treatment and cultivar. Uh, or cultivar and, and, uh, and year in that uh, basically the nematocytes did not increase yield at this particular location over the three year study period. So it looks like as a result, uh, the TIF NB high oil was definitely the way to go uh, as compared with using a nematocyte. So, I, you know, just overall summary, uh, uh, leaf spot pressure was low. O6G had a little more than the other two cultivars. We've known that those two 
resistant varieties do have a little bit better disease resistance package than uh, uh, than an 06G. It also uh, generally showed up with white mold. Uh, the root knot cultivars are nicely resistant, didn't have any pod damage. Uh, the level of damage wasn't that great except in 2018 on the 06Gs. So there is some year-to-year -year variation even on an 06G when grown on the same site. Uh, rotation did have an effect. As I said, the 2017 was a continuous peanut uh, as compared with the one year out rotation. But in the, the TIF NBI high oil definitely produced really good yields in a situation where there was uh, moderate nematode pressure and the, just the nematocysts just did not do the job. So it looks like, you know, we need to look a little more at maybe some of the newer varieties. I know there's some more resistant varieties coming down the pike. And if they start having yield potential uh, closer to that of 06G in a no pressure situation, I'm sure that uh, growers are going to look a lot more at them in a, in a nematode pressure situation because they know that they're going to yield uh, fairly well in those settings. The TIF NB high oil, um, in Georgia 14N, generally were very similar as the level of diseases that showed up, but certainly the TIF NV had the uh, had the edge on uh, on yield, and it just overall uh, lower cost option for producing peanuts in a nematicide situation with the TIF NBI oil, uh, as compared with using one of the nematicides.